Hello, thanks for joining. Uh, are we good? Do we want to get started? Hello, my name is Matthew Greer uh, again. I'm Exeral Product Manager here at CareStream Dental. Thanks for joining our virtual trade show. Uh, we're going to have lots of different uh, live events and videos being posted over the next few hours, uh, so I, I really appreciate your attention. I'm going to talk today, uh, or right now, about the CS9600 CBCT system, which is the most intelligent CBCT system out there on the market today. Uh, there's six patents pending on this device, so we really cared about innovating and improving CBCT uh, for the, the modern dental practice. Uh, so uh, with this system, it's a culmination of about five years of our R&D efforts, um, uh, voice of customer to really understand the customer's needs when it comes to CBCT imaging and, and panoramic imaging as well in their office. Um, so a lot of the innovations you see here are built around workflow and making sure you get the best image uh, the first time without having to do retakes or live with poor quality images because you don't want to over-radiate your patient. So uh, with this system, uh, we know we wanted to be able to do 3D facial scanning. So 3D facial photos that you can overlay on top of your comb beam scans. Um, so we know we needed a camera in the system to be able to do that. Uh, but we didn't want a one-trick pony. So with the CS9600, we actually have two cameras in the system. Uh, we have one here on our uh, two-ped side of the system. And we also have one here right behind our touchscreen interface. Uh, so those cameras are actually going to guide uh, the staff through that patient positioning process. Um, so instead of using laser beams to position, um, you'll see the field of view superimposed right on the patient's face, right here on our touchscreen interface. Um, it'll also uh, uh, be used for those 3D facial scanning. And also during the scans, uh, you'll actually get a, a live patient monitoring. So on our acquisition PC, during this pan or during the 3D, you get a live video feed of that patient to see if they're moving or have their eyes open uh, or they're swallowing. And you have, actually have a speaker behind our touchscreen interface. You can use a microphone and speak to that patient during the scan. Um, reassure them, make sure that their eyes are closed, uh, make sure that they're not moving around. Uh, so with this system, uh, uh, we also have our touchscreen interface, not just because it looks cool, but we wanted to have a real purpose. Um, so with this, you're going to do all of your exam setup um, um, with the touchscreen interface. So um, anything I do here on our touchscreen interface is actually going to be mirrored back and forth to our, uh, our acquisition PC. So if you could uh, rotate around to see our acquisition PC. Uh, right here is our panoramic interface. So anything I select over here, it'll actually be uh, changed on our touchscreen interface. Uh, so I just wanted to let, let you see that. We can go back over here. So anything I do over here actually will um, be changed. So you, if you uh, selected the wrong patient size or the wrong field of view or the wrong area of interest, uh, you don't have to go running and back and forth to the computer to, to set up your exam. So with this system, we can do our, our regular panoramic scans. We can do actual bite wings, TMJ, maxillary sinus. Uh, we, can do, uh, um, ex we can actually do an extra roll full mouth series. Now that's not uh, going to be the same level of quality that you would get in, with an intraoral scan. Uh, uh, intraoral sensor, uh, but in those cases where you have mandibular tori or a patient's a gagger and you can't get an intraoral sensor into that patient's mouth, uh, this will give you an image that's better than nothing. Um, so with this system, um, again, we wanted to make sure that this is abs you get the absolutely the right image uh, uh, no matter what you're taking. So with this system, it, we actually have intelligent positioning accessories, interactive positioning accessories. Um, I don't know if it shows up on the camera, but if you have the wrong positioning accessory in there for your protocol that you selected, in this case we have our panoramic selected, and we have our 3D chin cup in the, in the system, it actually glows red. Um, and uh, we, we wanted to make sure they use the right one, so we actually added um, I don't know if you can see here, uh, but if you click this little uh, exclamation point, uh, it'll actually show you the picture of the one you should be using. So we'll remove this one and place in our uh, panoramic positioner into the system. Once we have the correct positioning accessory in there, uh, it will uh, turn from red to green. And we have to make sure that 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 uh, positioner is clicked in properly so it's secure and you're not having your patient move around. So here uh, you can show uh, it has a green uh, light. One of the other things that we've done to speed up the workflow, especially for follow-up exams, is once you've taken a pan or once you've taken a 3D on, on a patient, the machine will actually remember for that specific patient 
the exact height it was uh, when it took that last scan, and the exposure parameters used last time. So that's what's indicated here with these orange icons right here on our interface. So in this case, we used large adult and our square jaw uh, for the panoramic positioning. And uh, on the right-hand side, you can see our column um, height adjustments are highlighted in orange. So in this case, the machine was a little bit higher the last time we took the scan. So I want to get that set up, ready to go for the next patient. I just hold that button down until the machine stops moving, and it'll be in the exact height it was when we took our last pan or 3D on this patient. So it really simplifies that workflow uh, for uh, those panoramic and 3D follow-up exams. So the machine stopped automatically uh, right exactly where it needed, needed to go. One other thing about this system uh, that is unique is uh, we have the ability to do standing wheelchair patients or uh, with our integrated seat here. Uh, so this seat can be used um, as an option. It can also be swung right out of the way. So it's very simple. So if you have a patient where you want to have uh, uh, them standing or have a wheelchair patient, uh, you just swing this right out of the way. Or it can be swung out underneath the fixed arm uh, if you have a little limited space. Um, so it's very simple, and it gives an, some extra stability to those uh, patients, especially those elderly patients um, uh, who are uh, maybe not as stable, or those patients that have undergone uh, sedation when you're doing those follow-up exams. Uh, so let's move this down so you can see. Is that good? All right. So with this system, uh, it's very smooth, quiet operation. Um, uh, sounds like an electric car. This is the Tesla of, of CBCT systems. So very quiet, smooth operation. So I've, I've uh, turned on our cameras. So um, if you can see here, on the, the left-hand side, we have our mid-sagittal uh, indicator. Uh, so we're just going to make sure the patient is split right in two. And then on uh, the right-hand side, we'll actually plot our Frankfurt horizontal plane. So instead of using laser beams to make sure that that patient is in Frankfurt horizontal plane, we'll use our video cameras. So I'll just place one point uh, at the tragus, one point at the orbitale. In this case, it's my hand. And, and as that patient gets into alignment by we, uh, adjusting the column height up and down, uh, that line will go from yellow to green. So you can have consistent, repeatable, uh, properly positioned panoramic images um, uh, uh, every single time. that in a second. So let's exit out of here and we'll go into our 3D interface. So with this system, um, there are uh, uh, 14 different field of view options from a 4x4 up to a 16x17, so that's diameter by height. Um, and then there's four different editions of the machine. We can come back over here. Uh, four different editions of the machine based on your maximum field of view. So you can go up to an 8x8, up to a 12x10, up to a 16x10, or up to a 16 by 17. So you can uh, truly, uh, you can purchase the machine as the 8 by 8 version or the 12 by 10 version and grow um, with that, uh, uh, grow the machine as your practice expands into other areas. So if you wanted to look at your condyles or to the, the airway, um, if you're interested in expanding to that, you can add those fields of view later. Uh, so, uh, with this system, uh, again, our, our, uh, our intelligent positioning accessories um, are showing uh, our previous uh, panoramic positioner. So, now we have red. Let's show which one we can use. We can show uh, we can use our 3D chin cup or our 3D bite block. So, with this, I'll use my 3D bite block. So, just like on our 8100 3D uh, CBCT scanner, we actually have letters right here on the bite block, A through G. Um, so on those focus field of view scans, you can even select the letter of interest right here on our interface. So upper or lower. Again, just like on our AE100 3D system, you're positioning the patient exactly the same way, occlusal table parallel to the floor, and the machine is going to adjust uh, to the patient to be able to capture the field of view that you're interested in. Uh, so, as I mentioned, you have 4x4 four four up to a 16x17 scan. Um, with those, we have uh, three different uh, resolution options. We have our high-res mode, we have our standard mode, and we have our low-dose mode. 
Um, so for the high-res mode, what sets this uh, CBCT scanner apart from uh, other CBCT scanners out on the market is we can do those high-resolution scans and those 4x4s, 5x5s, 6x6, 5x8 scans um, that are those smaller fields of view. But we can also go all the way up to a 10x10 dual jaw scan at 75 micron resolution. Now, why is that important? Um, so let's say you have a patient that has, is going to have an implant on one side of the mouth and a root canal um, on the other side of the mouth. Um, instead of both clinicians taking small field of view scans, potentially having a larger dose to that patient, you can just take one high resolution, uh, larger dual jaw scan, and both clinicians can get the information they need and reduce that dose to the patient. Uh, on this, on those, those uh, fields of views from 12 by 5 up to 16 by 17, we can go down to a 150 micron scan or 0.15 millimeter. Um, uh, so, uh, we can do our teeth scans, we can do our jaw scans. If I want to do an upper or a lower, it's as simple as touching right there on the touchscreen interface uh, to capture the area of interest. We can increase the diameter um, or the height to capture dual jaw scans um, for all the different fields of view in between. We can do TMJ, uh, single, uh, right, or left, or we can do a dual TMJ. Uh, and we can do uh, full head scans with this machine of 12 by 10, 16 by 10, 16 by 12, and 16 by 17. Um, if we needed to capture that tip of the nose, um, it's as simple as pressing the with nose button. So just like on our panoramic system uh, side of the system, we're going to use our video cameras for positioning. So when we select our field of view and I turn on my cameras, The machine's going to move into place and then show me uh, where that field of view is going to be on that patient. So you can see here, uh, this box is going to be the edge of that field of view. If I wanted to scan a little bit higher or a little bit lower, it's as simple as dragging and dropping right there on the touchscreen interface. It's very simple, um, easy operation. I can do fine tune adjustments with the arrow keys as well. So with this system, um, let's say I'm doing those, those small fields of view scans uh, because I'm going to do a root canal and I don't want to capture any other irrelevant anatomy to my, my scan. I can do a, uh, with this system, I can do my video positioning, my video camera positioning, um, which is almost like a photographic scout. But I can also do radiographic scouts. So with this system, I can do my, my 2D scout uh, to do a quick burst of radiation uh, to get my height information. And then I can also do uh, what we call our Smart Auto 3D, which is actually an axial scout. So I can do top-down positioning uh, by taking a very thin layer CBCT scan. It's about a 10-second scan on either the mandible or the maxilla. And we can actually do top-down positioning. So you can zero in exactly where you want to scan right there on the area of interest. So I want to get uh, the third molars um, uh, or um, any specific area of the mouth. I can zero in exactly on that area of interest. So let's do a quick... Uh, so we would do our quick lateral scout to get our height information. And then I will have my lateral scout here on the left hand side so I can drag and drop right there over on top of the, the scout uh, to make sure I'm capturing that exact area of interest. But that's not going to give you any information about where in the mouth you're scanning. Um, so, as you guys can see, we're actually, uh, not only does the machine remember uh, the, pa the patient history with the, the column height and the uh, exposure parameters, uh, once you've done a Smart Auto 3D on a patient, it remembers it and you can reuse it for later exams. So you don't have to do those multiple different times. So I can actually do this top-down positioning, drag and drop right over exactly where I want to scan. With this system, it is going to give you very high-level quality images, not just in res terms of resolution, but also the image itself. Um, so we have our fourth generation 4T CMOS sensor, uh, as well as the ability to scan 120 kV uh, with our generator. So with scanning 120 kV versus the typical 90 kV that's available with most CBCT scanners out on the market, uh, you're going to get a uh, much higher level quality uh, scan. Uh, we're able to uh, penetrate into those very dense objects, those met metals um, uh, and other dense objects in the mouth and reduce the noise on the image. You're going to get a very crisp, clean image at about the same dose that you would get with a 90 kV image. We can also do uh, equivalent level of quality at, a, at an even lower dose than what we can with 90 kV.
so uh, with this system, um, it, also, it also comes standard with five years of our uh, CS Advantage plan, which is going to cover all parts on the system, um, any updates that come out on the next few years, um, over those next five years, um, access to all our ongoing training content, as well as our remote support team, which is open from 8 to 8.30 uh, uh, Eastern Time. Um, so uh, with this system, it also includes five years of our CS Upstream service, which is a 24-7 hardware monitoring service. So every time you take a scan, every time uh, uh, it has an error message, every 10 seconds actually, the uh, system, as long as it's connected to the internet, is constantly pinging back to our servers. So it's constantly sending lots and lots of data about the status of the machine. Voltages on boards. Um, is there any error messages? Have you done any scans? What's the field of view, the resolution? Did you use the right positioning accessory um, for the scan? Are you doing any retakes? Are you doing more retakes on specific days or others? All that information is being constantly sent to our servers. Um, so we're actually using that data um, from our R&D perspective. So our R&D team meets um, every two weeks and reviews all of that data. And we've actually made some changes to the, the manufacturing of the machine already uh, based on the data we've received on those machines that are out installed worldwide. So we noticed uh, that some, uh, one of our boards was giving us a, a bad voltage reading um, or an incorrect voltage reading um, in, in some cases. So we knew exactly which machines were giving us that bad voltage reading. So we changed, we proactively changed the way we manufacture that board on all new machines and we actually went back to those existing machines that were exhibiting those systems and proactively replace those parts. So what we are trying to get to and what we've done um, already is get to a preventative maintenance rather than a reactive maintenance with this machine. So that's an exclusive to the CS9600. Um, and uh, that I feel like that's a very cool feature on the 9600. So uh, are there any questions from uh, the Facebook Live audience? So with this machine, it is a five-in-one system, um, so you can do your panoramics, your 3Ds. We also are adding a cephalometric add-on, uh, which will go off to this right-hand side, our scanning ceph option, uh, which will be available uh, later on this year uh, towards the summer. Uh, the machine also does 3D object scanning, so you can take your PVS, alginate, or plaster models, digitize them, get an STL file from them. Uh, also, uh, we have the ability to do 3D facial scans with this machine. Um, so you can do, um, using this camera, a 3D facial photo that you can overlay on top of the cone beam scan. And let me see if I can pull one up and show you. So here's an example of uh, some of our 3D facial scans uh, that we can uh, get with this system. So you can get that 3D facial photo and overlay that on top of your cone beam scan. Uh, so we got a question, how is our MAR feature different than other systems? So with our CS Metal Artifact Reduction, our CS MAR system, uh, we're able to uh, uh, remove those metal artifacts um, and actually uh, allow you to toggle back and forth within the display of the system to be able to show the scan with our standard uh, re reconstruction and with the metal artifact reduction. Um, so with metal artifact reduction, um, it's been around in the market uh, for other competitors uh, for a while. Uh, we didn't implement it in our systems because those algorithms can be a little too aggressive. They remove things that they shouldn't, cause false positives, remove bone where it, it should be there. Um, so it introduces some um, a lack of confidence into reading your CBCT scans. So with our system, um, we allow you to toggle back and forth. So it, it's two reconstructions, um, our standard FTK reconstruction uh, and our metal artifact reduction scan. So I don't know if you can see very well in this system, uh, but this scan um, is our FTK scan. And, and uh, you might be able to see that fracture line here on number nine. Um, uh, but explaining that to your patient or explaining that to your referrals uh, might be a little bit more challenging. So with our system, we allow you to toggle back and forth. And here, with our metal artifact reduction uh, algorithm applied, that fracture line really pops right out. So explaining that to your referrals, explaining that to your patients that may not know what they're looking at on these cone beam scans is going to be a lot easier. So uh, uh, 
Thank you so much uh, for watching my demo of the CS9600 system uh, and participating in our virtual trade show. Uh, you can see the full schedule of events at carestreamdental.com forward slash virtual trade show. Um, again, my name is Matthew Greer uh, uh, and I'm with Carestream Dental and thank you uh, for watching our demo.